One thing that never stays constant this life, one thing that is always changing whether for good or bad is the storage medium. This short video will explore my personal favourite portable storage mediums from the 70s up until the early noughties. There's no such thing as a time past the mid noughties so get over it. I won't cover more permanent devices such as hard disks here, that's a video for another day. I'm also not going to talk about cartridges or even barcodes, I'm just going to stick to things that you can use on a daily basis and use for saving your work on. So without further ado, let us begin. Punched Card Ah, a floppy storage medium so hard in technical terms that it could take your eye out. Punch cards, also known as Hollerith cards, were a very physical and magnet friendly method of storing data as far back as the late 19th century for fairground, organs and the like, up until the mid 70s and beyond. Consisting of cards with punched holes, each row usually contains 8 bits of data equivalent to 1 byte which is approximately 1 character's worth of data. They are made by typing the code, printout or data into a Hollerif machine which then translates the text into a relevant set of punches on the card. If you've made a mistake in your code then you can apply a little sticker to cover up the problematic holes, correcting the problem characters. If you've made lots of mistakes, you're probably best to throw away the entire card and create a new one. Punch cards are then fed into a reading machine that translates the holes back into digital data or ASCII characters and voila! you have one of the first media devices capable of saving your work. Tape Originally invented for recording sound in 1928 by Fritz Flumer, tape really started to take off in the 50s on huge spinning reels often used by broadcasting services. You can also see them in the backgrounds on old sci-fi movies or on archive footage of mainframe computers whirring away. Even more commonly, they were an incredibly popular storage medium in the 80s. Aside from holding some fantastic 80s tunes, they were used on machines such as the Sinclair Spectrum and Commodore 64. Data was recorded onto the tape in an analog audible format, usually at about 1300 board. Some machines were capable of translating the data into digital format at higher speeds, but the lower board rates were designed to minimise data error on loading. Judging by the problems faced by myself and countless other children, it probably could have done with being a teensy bit slower. Either that, or we just had the volume control too low. Discs. The first read-only 8-inch versions held 80 kilobytes of data, and although other sizes were available, the most common format initially introduced was the 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk. Initially called a floppy disk because it was incredibly floppy, they could each hold different amounts of data depending on format and double-sidedness. Common DOS double density formats held 360 kilobytes per side, and these discs featured a permanent hole which exposed the actual disc media, and is something I see as being incredibly fragile. This was fixed with the three and a half inch format providing a lovely metal shutter. Mmm, metal shutter. A more sturdy protective shell, more room for a label with the spinner only being visible on the back of the disc, right protect notches that could be moved unless you were using a disc designed not to be written over, then you'd have to fall back to sellotape. These discs are my favourite storage mediums. One thing I do love about floppies is their ability to change how they feel from a day to day basis. One day it won't work at all, a week later it works absolutely fine. Ah, I love the sound of disk drives in the morning. Zip drives! They seemed revolutionary at the time, and they were. Connecting via your parallel port to begin with, they were the size of disks, but could hold a whopping 100 megabytes initially, and this increased even further as the technology evolved. A proprietary system designed by Omega, they soon caught on with increasingly large programs and data proving difficult to fit onto a standard floppy, and writable CD-ROM still a while from being mainstream. Back then the only real way to transport large files was to PK zip them over several disks, which 5 times out of 10 would result in some sort of fatal disk read error. 
Which brings us on to compact discs, those shiny coated plastic things. The original drives for this medium were essentially the same as a CD audio player with only one time speed capabilities, resulting in a sedentary 150 kilobytes per second read rate. This soon sped up however with four time speed becoming commonplace, which was just as swiftly replaced by speeds up to a whopping 48 speed. I remember my quad speed creative drive fondly, it was pretty darn expensive at the time, but all that data. PC magazine cover discs soon replaced floppies in newsstands everywhere, jam packed with utilities, demos and other pointless crap. This was until the internet arrived. The internet! Although not a portable storage medium as such, the internet is essentially everywhere, so it may as well be. Back in the 90s it was just taking off, and with dial-up speeds only available up to a top end of 56.6 kilobits per second, not including dial-up time or the possibility of your grand being on the phone, it wasn't really useful for uploading and downloading large amounts of data. Although clients such as Napster soon reared their debatably illegal heads, with people leaving their machines on overnight to download games, music and possibly other media which we won't go into here. And so we arrive at USB. USB changed the world we live in, paving the way for USB sticks capable of holding a vast amount of data. This coincided with SD cards which used the same methods of storing the data, allowing astronomical amounts of data to be held on just a tiny area. The hard disk on my PC in 1995 was 850 megabytes, pretty big at the time. This SD card can hold over 37 times that amount, and that's just the tip of a data hungry iceberg. Absolutely crazy. Thanks for watching this video about data storage mediums, I hope you enjoyed it. I do a few videos a week so please subscribe if you can or feel free to click one of the videos below. Thank you for watching, good night.